So, I uh, got a little bit of a video here. Uh, I've got an article that keeps being shared to me on YouTube. And so I wanted to read the article and I uh, wanted to summarize it for you and show you why it's, it's, it's just not, it's not true. It's just, just an absolutely ridiculous article. Uh, it's, it's entitled, Should It Be Illegal to Indoctrinate Kids with Religion? Uh, it's written by a guy who ran for uh, governor of California and, and some of these things. Um, but I, I want to start reading this. Uh, it starts out, it says, Religious child soldiers carrying AK-47s, bullying anti-gay Jesus kids, infant genital mutilation, teenage suicide bombers, child Hindu brides. No matter where you look, if adults are participating in dogmatic religions, then they are also pushing those same ideologies onto their kids. Um, again, right off the bat, you just got to look for the language that is is very specifically phrased to to make you think a certain way. So the idea of indoctrinate, just has a very negative connotation. Uh, they start talking about uh, children carrying weapons of war, and they compare it with bullying anti-gay, you know, like people who are gay. Compare it to infant genital mutilation, to suicide bombers, to Hindu brides, all of these things, and they say this is all because of religion. Again, uh, we've talked about the idea that mankind is just wicked, and the fact is, you look at a lot of these things. And there are communist regimes where you have children carrying AK-47s. Uh, you have various other groups, atheistic and otherwise, who have done some of these things. I think of Jeffrey Epstein, etc., who who is taking advantage of small children, uh, the, the teenage suicide bombers. Again, yes, that is typically a an Islamic thing, uh, but you will see that in a lot of communist regimes uh, and other areas think about japan um etc and uh and so this idea of no matter where you look people are being you know religiously slammed um it, it's a tough one to, it's a tough nut to crack because overall throughout history mankind has been religious okay so there's almost no group of people you can find in the history of the world that did not have some sort of religion to their name however the question you have to ask is does the teachings of this religion back this up do the teachings of this religion say you should do these things uh, or are they doing it because they're wicked humans all right it says regardless of what you think or believe science shows human beings to know very little again uh continuing just to just to know how to think through this look at the language look at the we are ignorant and therefore let me tell you something and ooh, ooh, look religion bad and so, so so look at what he does here as he talks about science he says science shows humans know very little our eyes register only one percent of the electromagnetic spectrum in the universe our ears detect less than one percent of the sound wave frequencies human senses our brains vehicles to understanding the world leave much to be desired in fact our genome is only one percent different than that of the tramp of a, of a chimpanzee i don't know why i'm about to say tramp uh, trampoline Amazingly, despite the obvious fact that no one really knows that much about what is going on with ourselves in the universe, we still insist on the accuracy of the grand spiritual claims handed down for us from our barefoot forefathers. Okay, here's, here's, the, here's the thing, though. To say they were barefoot forefathers is automatically playing the card of they must be ignorant and stupid. We do not know what they looked like. We do not know that they were barefoot. Okay, all of this is language to get you to buy into a narrative that you've got simple, hairy, barefooted cavemen ooh, 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 hitting rocks and, and coming up with the sky god. You actually look at some of the things these ancient men did with the technology that we know they had or suspect they have. I, I have the contention that they were smarter than we are. Okay, we're not we're not at the pinnacle of like human evolution. Okay, we are no smarter than they are. We just have access to more information. However, he just finished saying that we don't know a whole lot. We can't perceive a whole lot. We can't hear a whole lot. But we know that God doesn't exist. Okay, I keep being asked, prove God exists, prove God exists, prove God exists. Prove he doesn't. Prove that all of this can arise without some sort of designer. Because you look everywhere in the world where there's something that has an appearance of design, and almost without fail, it was designed. So the track record is, looks like designed, was designed. Looks like designed, was designed. Looks like designed, was designed. 
very rare cases. And most of them have to do with like geological features where we see like, oh, look, it's the old man of the mountain. He looks like he has a, a face. It, it, it's a rock chipping. It looks like a nose and a chin. That's not hard to do. But this is hard to do. Uh, again, just, just thinking properly here. It says, we celebrate holidays over these ancient religious tales. We choose life partners and friends over these fables. We go to war to defend these myths. Uh, again, narratives have power. And whether the narrative is, you know, we need to follow our leaders unquestioningly, or the narrative is Trump is, is a literal Nazi, or the narrative is, you know, serve the state and you'll be happiest. We all have narratives that we follow. We all have narratives that we believe. The fact that people believe something does not make it true or false. The fact that people claim something does not make it true or false. The fact that people follow something does not make it true or false. The moral ineptitude of the follower does not shed any light on whether something is true or false. Okay? So I find a lot of things atheists do reprehensible. That does not mean atheism is false. It has no bearing on it whatsoever. And, and so they're, they're talking, they're just, th this guy is just bashing the idea that with how little we can detect and how little we understand, we still believe in a God. Th th there's no connection there. Okay, he goes on, he says, a child's mind is terribly susceptible to what it hears and sees from its parents, family, social surroundings. When the human being is born, its brain remains in a delicate developmental phase until far later in life. Okay, great, yeah, of course. All right, kids are impressionable, says Dr. Eunice Pearson Hefty, director of the Teaching Environmental Science Program at Texas's Natural Resource Conservation Commission. Anything you tell them when they're real small can have lasting impression. Hold on. That, that is true in some regard, but as a guy who has worked in Christian schools for years, who's worked with Christian schools for years, and who's taught college students and all of that, I can tell you the number of kids that I went to school with in a Christian school, the number of kids I taught in a Christian school, and then the number of campers I've dealt with through the years. I've been doing this for a long time. A lot of them fall away. So yes, they can be impressionable. They can follow something for a while. But you look out and you see the vast majority of people who claim to be Christian do not stick with it. So this, this whole idea of like, oh, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna, they're going to be convinced of it for the rest of their life or it's going to developmentally crush them. No, it, 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 it's, it's not. It, it might. I mean, they do use the word can. Um, but, but the fact is, there are a lot of kids who were never convinced that Christianity was real. They went along for, with it for a while, and then they left. That's what happens all the time. Uh, it says it's only later when kids hit their teens and they begin to think for themselves and see the bigger picture. It's only then they begin to ask whether their parents' teachings make sense and are correct. However, depending on the power of the indoctrination in their childhood, people's ability to successfully question anything is likely stifled their entire lives. No, not necessarily. Uh, I questioned all the time. I questioned the existence of God. I questioned how the resurrection was possible. I questioned whether God wrote the Bible. And I did my own independent research and came down to the conclusions that I'm at. I questioned all sorts of things that I was taught. I don't know that there was a thing that I was taught that I didn't question. Now, you can pull up the cases of those people who, they, oh, I just uh, I just can't question. But that's not the way, I mean, the, the very teachings of the Bible, just so you understand, when it came to the New Testament, in the New Testament, there was the growing Christian faith, all right? The, the Old Testament was primarily more Jewish, all right, and what God did is he revealed more information. He explained some of the ways they misunderstood the Old Testament, and that's where the New Testament comes into play. And so the idea that Jesus is God was a very big stumbling block for a Jewish believer, someone who would have been prone to say, I don't think that's true. And what the Apostle Paul did, for instance, who was convinced himself that the Bible was real and that God and Jesus, you know, Jesus is God, he was convinced of that. He began to take the Old Testament and show and explain how it tied into the New Testament. And it said that there was a group of Christians at the, they were in Berea. There were a group of Christians and it actually says they were more noble because they listened and they believed, but then they went and they searched the scriptures, which would be the Old Testament. They searched them daily to double check what he was saying. So this idea of ignorant people who are not questioning anything, that's actually extremely unbiblical. You should be questioning everything. 
So that's just a, an adjustment and a correction here. Uh, it goes on and it says, uh, depending on the power of indoctrination, etc., etc. In my philosophical and atheist-minded novel, The Transhumanist Wager, protagonist Jethro, Jethro Knights ends up with the ability to rewrite the social laws of the world. Uh, one important issue he faces is whether to make religion illegal altogether. There are many arguments for why religion has not been beneficial to the human race, especially in the last few centuries. Okay, just going to stop there. Um, go read the books, Why You Think the Way You Do. Uh, Misreading Scripture with Western Eyes. Uh, there's a few other books like that. I'll, 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 I'll put some links up. Um, they actually cover the impact Christianity has had on the world, specifically why you think the way you do. Uh, Christianity has had amazing impacts on the world, uh, from the development of technology to, to work ethic to even just technological advancement because the, the monks in the monastery had basically said, we're not going to collect any wealth, but they made a lot of money, so they poured it right back into their, their monasteries, and because they were pouring it back into their monasteries, they made more wealth, and, and you basically had this wonderful cycle that just kind of kept burgeoning, uh, and it basically created economies and all sorts of things. And so that would be a book, if you're curious and you're a, you're a, a thinker, uh, I, would, I would suggest go check that book out, because this idea of like, oh, Christianity, religion's done very little good for the world. It's, it's done a ton of good for the world. Uh, the the very origin of hospice care was because of a Christian worldview. The idea of orphanages and taking care of the sick and the fact that during the plagues, Christians would be the ones running into the plague to rescue people. That That is something that Christianity has brought to the table that other things have not. And so you could say, like, well, I mean, it's here now. Yeah, but we are still living in the afterglow of what Christianity has brought to this world. So, so this idea of religion has brought very little good to the world. You're just ignorant. You don't, you don't know what you're talking about. It's easy to say, it's hard to prove. And yeah, you could bring up like, oh, look at this religious war and look at the thing that guy did, you know, and he's a religious person, so it must be. That's, that's not how you argue. Just because I do something doesn't mean my religion okayed it. And just because my religion okayed it doesn't mean that's the right religion. Okay, so just just understand that. Uh, goes on, and he he basically talks about his book and how this this guy wanted to make religion illegal, but he chose to out of out of you know this freedom. You you should have the freedom to do it. But look what he does in this book. He restricts religion from the public sphere. He restricts religion from being integrated with with education, and he restricts religion from being pushed on to minors. And uh, I I find this interesting because. Uh, I just finished reading a book called Irreversible Damage, where, man, the um, the transgender agenda is, is being just pushed on small kids like crazy. Because, he, as he said, they're very impressionable. Uh, and junior high kids are just absolutely destroying themselves because of this transgender thing. And so I would, I would, I would be curious to see where he stands on that. Because there are a lot of things that are very atheistic, that very much deny the existence of God, that have caused extreme damage to kids. And and so even things like the Columbine shooting where they talked about their their animals and all of that stuff, um, that, that would be an evolutionary mindset that's teaching you're an animal, so what should stop you? What should stop you from going out and shooting up a school? Because morality, that, that's just your opinion, man. So I, I, I just look at a lot of this stuff and it's like, well, you shouldn't push it on minors. Okay, but in that case, you shouldn't push anything, anything at all. Because, again, you're, they're, they're susceptible to believing. Not surprisingly, some of the atheist and transhumanist communities feel the same way as Mr. Knight does. While we may think that believing in a warmongering prophet or a four-armed blue deity or in a spiteful god who drowns nearly all his people in, is wrong, atheists and transhumanists are willing to allow it. Now, again, to put Muhammad on the same level as some of the Hindu deities or God who flooded the earth, um, again, it, it's category errors. Like, yes, they are all religion, but there's there's a difference here. Now, now you go on and it says this. Uh, the problem is that it does not meaningly interfere with the world. 9-11 was a religious-inspired event. So was the evil of the Catholic Inquisition. But Pearl Harbor was not religiously motivated. All the stuff that Hitler did in butchering people was not religiously motivated. Okay, He used some of the religious people to kind of get ahead, but that was not religiously motivated. So for every example you give of things like, oh, 9-11, it was Muslims doing it. Yeah, but Pearl Harbor, 
Yes, they worshipped their emperor, which means they might have been a little more likely to follow him, but that was not religiously motivated. That was a war. You look at all the battles throughout history that had very little to do with religion or were Christian groups battling other Christian groups over territory or other things. That's not religiously motivated. So again, I, I find this article just laughably bad. Uh, he goes on and he says... Um, Again, they were religiously motivated. So is the quintessential conflict between Palestine and Israel. Okay. But again, there's, there's plenty of, of other illustrations of, of conflict that is not religiously based. Okay. When the USSR, you know, when they were battling back and forth over the Ukraine or other things, that, that had nothing to do with religion. When, when China is aggressing down into, you know, Hong Kong and all that, that has nothing to do with religion. You know, North Korea and South Korea at each other's throats. That has nothing to do with the religion. So again, you can cherry pick little illustrations, but, but this again, it's just terrible. Uh, if you take God and religion out of all these happenings, you would likely find they would not have happened at all. Uh, you can't make that case. Uh, instead, you would probably find uh, is peaceful people and communities dedicated to preserving and improving life through reason, science, and technology. No. No. Look at the communist governments. They are atheistic. That is, like... The, the, the running dogma of, of communism toward religion is the idea. It's the opiate of the masses, which means it's like a drug that you can use to control them if you really want to, but it doesn't have any substance. It's not something that we're going to do. It is, communism is essentially atheistic. And look at all the destruction they've done. Look at all the chaos that Black Lives Matter and Antifa, and if you want to go there, the, the groups you know with the capital siege... That was not religiously motivated. There were religious people, probably, who were there doing stuff, but they were not doing it in the name of religion. Okay, he goes on and he says, religion should remain the private endeavor for adults. Um, this is a guy, Giovanni Santosti, Cent uh, whatever, how you, how you say his name, uh, who is a neuroscientist at Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. He runs the 10,000-person strong YouTube group, Scientific Transhumanism. An appropriate analogy of religion is that it's kind of like porn which means it's not something one would expose a child to. Again, I don't think you should expose children to porn. Um, but again, morally speaking, why not? If, if there are no morals that says, you know, children shouldn't have sex. I mean, we, we push transgender stuff on them. We push homosexual stuff on them. We have sex education all the way down into elementary school. So, so I think this is a terrible illustration because porn actually changes your mind. It goes on and says, unfortunately, even though atheists, non-religious people, and transhumanists number almost a billion people, it's too problematic and unreasonable to imagine taking God and religion out of the world entirely. But we do owe it to the children of the planet to let them grow up free from the ambush of a belief system and the history of leading to a great violence, obsessively neurotic guilt, and oppression of virtually every social group that exists. Again, it, it, it's cherry-picking illustrations. You, you have more generosity, you have more adoptions, you have more care of other people in religious, specifically Christian communities than anywhere else. And so to say that you have some people who are going to have neurotic issues with Christianity, it's true. But that is disingenuous. It's just wrong. It says, uh, like other atheists and transhumanists, I join uh, in calling for regulation that restricts religious indoctrination of children until they reach, let's say, 16 years of age. Here's the thing, he doesn't know. He, he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what the proper age is. I've known 18-year-olds who are grossly immature. I've known 18-year-olds who are very, very mature. The same could go with 16. The same could go with 20. So the fact that we make an arbitrary number line is exactly that. It's arbitrary. There are people who are highly impressionable who are in their 40s or 50s. So what are you going to do? So th this is very irresponsible and, and stupid. Uh, once a child hits their mid-teens, let them have it. If relig so, so should we let them have porn too? I, I'm just referencing your previous illustration because you, you said religions like porn. So should we? Anyway, um, it says uh, if religion is something that interests them, 16-year-olds uh, are enthusiastic, curious, and able to rationally start exploring their world. Uh, I don't know how many 16-year-olds he knows, but... Yes to some of those, no to some of those, uh, with or without the guidance of their parents. I, I don't know. I think they still need their guidance. I've known a lot of 18-year-olds who are very immature who still need their parental guidance. And if they've gotten to that stage and they still need their parental guidance to that level, then maybe their parents aren't the ones who are doing a good job guiding them. But 
that, that's another issue altogether. Uh, he goes on, he says, forcing religion onto minors. Uh, sorry, but before that, they are too impressionable to repeatedly be subjected to ideas that are faith-based, unproven, and historically wrought with danger. Okay, then there are all sorts of philosophies and theologies that we should not be teaching them either. The fact is, almost any idea taken to an extreme is dangerous. You cannot single out religion, because atheism is just as dangerous, if not more so. It's, it's just the case. Again, I, I don't want to beat the drum, but communism is a very atheistic worldview, and it has caused more deaths than anything else this year, uh, this, this century. I mean, like, 1900s and so. Um, I know, it's 2020 now. Uh, 2021, actually. Uh, he goes on, he says, Forcing religion onto minors is essentially a form of child abuse. How? I mean, he tries to explain it, but I, I, I fail to see how what he says is child abuse. He says, uh, it's child abuse because it scars their ability to reason and to limits their ability to consider the world in an unbiased manner. If you teach it from an atheistic worldview, you are biased toward the atheism. If you teach it theistically, you are biased toward the theistic. No matter what you teach your kids you are biasing them in a direction one way or another. This idea is stupid that you could have an unbiased mindset. You, you are going to have a predilection. It's just what happens as you're raised. Now, we work to say, hey, let's, let's understand different worldviews. That's what I do. I try to teach people, what are the other worldviews? What are the other ways of thinking? But you can't get away from bias. You can learn to mitigate it and live with it and all of that, but to say, I don't think you should teach Christianity or religion, you're actually saying, my bias is right. Your bias is wrong. He goes on, he says, um, forcing religion onto minors is essentially a form of child abuse, which scars their ability to reason, limits their ability to consider the world in an unbiased manner. A reasonable society should not have to indoctrinate its children. It's, it's going to one way or another. It goes on. Its children should discover and choose religious paths for themselves when they become adults, if they choose one at all. Uh, so again, uh, he, he seems to think religion is the only harmful thing in this world. Religion is the only thing that could indoctrinate someone. Religion is the only thing that's caused harm. When actually you look at it and you say, nope, atheism causes just as much harm. And so that's why I look at this article as irresponsible. Uh, I don't think the article proves at all what, what people try to say it does. Uh, I keep getting it linked to me and I finally was like, fine, I'll read it. And it's garbage. And and it is. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed just kind of this, this it's, it's an extended critique of this article. Um, but I hope you enjoy it. This is the Janus Project. Please uh, leave a comment below, uh, like and subscribe, and uh, I will catch you guys next time.